Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Uh, Whiskey 6 uh, Lima, is it Lima Golf, is that correct? Crap, and I want to be understood. I'm a communicator, not a broadcaster. Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. Probably my most requested video is how to set up a station. So I'm going to do that today. I'm going to set up a transceiver, power supply, microphone, and a CW key, and the connection to the antenna. And I'm going to do it right here. The um, transceiver I'm going to use is a uh, Yaesu FT450. It could have been any number of different transceivers. Uh, basic connections are all about the same. This is my Yaesu FT450. Um, I like it a lot. It's a great little transceiver. It's got a handle on one side. If I'm going out to field day or going to set something up out in the yard, test an antenna. It's a really handy transceiver. It's relatively light, relatively small, um, and pretty easy to uh, to work with. It does have a, a gigantic menu system. Uh, some things that are in the menu I wished were not. For example, the mic gain is in the menu uh, system or menu setting. So we're going to set up the 450. In doing this um, demonstration, I'm going to turn the equipment around and have the back of it facing the camera so you can see the connections. On this Yaesu 450, um, there is, of course, uh, the uh, ubiquitous SO239 female coax connector that pretty much every transceiver has. This transceiver covers HF, so it doesn't have one for UHF, VHF. Some transceivers that are just HF transceivers can have multiple antenna connections at the back. It's a convenience. Um, um, some of the higher end transceivers have multiple connections. The other connector on this is this Molex connector. Uh, this happens to be a 4-pin. Uh, for years and years and years, the standard was a 6-pin. Uh, and seems to be evolving into this 4-pin connector. So we've got, and we've also got a serial connection down here for hooking this up to your computer. Um, a logging program on a computer uh, is a great way to go. If you're going to do RTTY or slow scan TV or some digital mode, um, you'll be using that connector. Some of the newer transceivers have USB ports, which is even handier, but you can convert that to, uh, to USB. Um, there's also uh, other connections on the back for other peripherals. The, um, my connection on this one, and we'll get to that in a minute, is um, a, uh, a modular plug, which is pretty hard to install on your own, so if you're buying a microphone, you might want to check that out and get an adapter cable. They're readily available, already made up, and frankly, it's just a lot easier to go that way. Um, headphones and CW jack plug into the front. I've got another transceiver we could use. This one is also pretty popular. Um, this is an ICOM product, an ICOM IC7000 that I've had for a long time. Uh, great little transceiver. Uh, receiver is really pretty good for um, a receiver that covers a huge range of frequencies. Um, it has few switches on the front and a lot of menus, but it has a really nice display screen. Uh, on the back, there are the uh, typical um, SO239, or what it really is, is a UHF female connector. Uh, one is for HF, the other is for uh, UHF and VHF. Uh, there is the, um, where is it? The uh, DC connector on this one is also the 4-pin Molex. Connector on the top is for accessories um, related to other devices. And it ha also has um, um, connections here for uh, various peripherals, these uh, mini plugs. Okay, but for today we're going to set this aside and use the 450 because it's a little bit easier to work with. Now, with the 450, we need to hook up a power supply, and there are lots of choices. Just, there's got to be at least 100 different power supplies. This is switching power supply from Alenco. It's really popular. You see it uh, in a lot of different shacks. Um, it has a, a voltage control on the, on the front and a meter for setting the voltages. I think it's good for 30 amps. Um, 
so it's more than enough to power an HF transceiver. It has a typical binding post connections on the back. Um, and it has some other uh, connectors on the front for lower current. Uh, it also has a cigarette lighter a port. Uh, I'm not going to do it. use it today. I, the only objection I have to switching supplies is they make a lot of noise. And you may hear this thing in your uh, receiver. Um, they can really cover an entire band. They can be really dirty. Uh, not all switching supplies are created equal. Some have filter systems, others don't. That's why my favorite power supply is this one. This beast of a power supply weighs about 20, probably 20 pounds, maybe a little more. Uh, it's good for um, 25 amps, more than enough to power up a transceiver. A typical transceiver like this draws 15, 20 amps at the most. Uh, it's not fancy, basically has an on and off switch on the front. Um, and it lights up to tell you it's on. And on the back there are screw terminal screws that are insulated. That uh, One is for the, uh, uh, the red connection, of course, is the plus, And uh, this one's grounded to the chassis. So plus and minus go on the back. Now, we've got a power supply and we've got a transceiver. Now how do we connect them? Cables that are already made up to hook up an HF transceiver are available from a number of sources. You just have to make sure that you get the right one. Um, as I said, the um, two that I had here, the ICOM IC7000 and this Yesu, have a four-pin Molex connector. And I'm going to plug that in to the back of the 450. Um, there is an orientation to the plug. There's a um, little clip thing on the that goes on the top. And they push it in until it snaps and it's connected. There are also uh, six pin Molex connectors, which were the standard for years and years and years. Um, some of the um, uh, larger transceivers still use this six pin. Uh, it, um, its orientation is like this, and again, it's got a clip on the top, uh, three by two connectors as opposed to the two by two. So this is probably the most common at this time. Another connector that's being used on Ellicraft transceivers and maybe a couple of others is a power pole. The power pole connector looks like this. It's got um, red and black. The problem with these is uh, unless you put in a pin it can be easily withdrawn from the back of the transceiver. It can become unplugged. Also the orientation of the black and red can be reversed. It's not really a polarized connector, so you can inadvertently connect it backwards. On some transceivers, if you hook the uh, plus to the negative on the back of the transceiver, it's going to do some damage. So this is my least favorite connector, but it's on a lot of equipment that I have. Um, and on my website, I've sold tens of thousands of these things. The other thing we're going to need to set up the station is a microphone, and there are lots of choices. And, and they come as a desk mic, uh, usually uh, a handheld mic is included in the box with a transceiver, uh, something like this one. This is a Yesu microphone. The problem with these mics is the frequency response is usually not very good. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. They come free in the box and that's kind of what they're worth, not much. Um, in this case it has the correct modular plug, which is what's on the front of this um, Yesu 450. The mic connection is modular. And this plug is not easy to install. so. If you're going to get a microphone, make sure it has that or you can put an adapter cable on it. The most common microphone connection for years and years was this 8-pin mic connector. And they're still pretty popular. A lot of transceivers have them. Uh, they work great. They don't, uh, they don't wear out. They're a little tricky to install, but can be done. Uh, the pins that you're not using, if you're soldering one of these on the end of a cable, clip the pins that you're not going to use out of the way so you have room to solder. Um, this happens to be a desk mic, 
That's a Sure 444, which is um, you've probably seen in a hundred movies. Um, it's a great mic, sounds good. It's a communications mic, so its frequency response is really good for voice. Um, another microphone is something like this, um, this kind of thing. Um, that must be an ICOM microphone that has an electric cartridge in it, which has got a real flat response, um, real crisp audio. They sound great. It's a, it's a good choice. And another microphone uh, that I like a lot is the Heil um, mics with the uh, HC5 cartridge in them. Uh, this one's, uh, I think it's called an HM10. It has both the HC4 and the HC5 cartridge in it. There's a switch on the top. Uh, with any of these microphones, whether it's this one, this one, or this one, what you shouldn't do is put it on the desk and then talk into it. You want to have the microphone right up against your lips. So this mic needs to come off the tabletop and be right here. So you have maybe a half an inch to the microphone or an inch. Uh, same thing with this one. So this needs to be picked up and close talked. If you have a microphone that comes out of the stand, remove it from the stand, hang on to it, and close talk the microphone. If you don't do that, what happens is um, you develop room echo. And so as you're talking, the sound's bouncing off the walls and entering the microphone, slightly delayed, it produces an echo, which is not good communication. So run the mic gain down, uh, set the mic gain so that you're in the bottom half of the ALC scale, turn on the compressor, run about 5 dB of clipping. You don't need an external processor of any kind. Most transceivers these days have something built into them in the transceiver to do that. An outboard box is just going to cause you some grief. Um, you don't want to run a compressor into a compressor. <clears throat> I'm going to set this up. Um, and again, if you end up with a, a mic like that, uh, make sure that you get the right cable set. Uh, Bob Hiles cables are uh, set up so that um, Yellow is Yesu, which makes it pretty easy. And then um, this has got the modular plug on it, so we're going to put that into the front. And once it snaps or clicks, it's in. Um, so we've connected power supply to the uh, transceiver. We've hooked up a microphone. Um, if you are going to send CW, uh, either a paddle or a straight key, um, plugged in. Usually it's in the back of a transceiver and oftentimes it's a quarter inch uh, phone plug, uh, like a headphone plug. Um, in this case it's on the front of this little Yesu and it happens to be the eighth inch stereo kind. So we've got the power supply, transceiver, microphone, key. The next thing we need to hook up would be an antenna so we can be heard. So let's do that. I've got some uh, RG213 run into the shack here. This is RG213. This is a PL259. Not all PL259s are created equal. Some are better than others. Um, one of the differences that I've noticed on some uh, connectors is that this barrel is too long for the SO239. So when you cinch it down, uh, you think you've got it tight, but you can uh, wiggle the coax and if the ground isn't properly connected at the uh, coax connector, uh, you, there's a problem. So you don't want to transmit unless it's tight. And so um, run it down so it's finger tight. Don't use pliers. Don't, uh, don't cinch it down. Make it tight. It is possible for it to come loose over time, so you want to check it. Wiggle the coax. If it's seated properly, it's tight, doesn't move, you're good to go. Um, I said I was going to put these things up backwards, and this one's facing me. Oh. So, um, we've got an already made cable, which is a great way to go, connected to the 450. We've hooked up a coax connector. We've got a microphone plugged into the front. This is a basic station. We can go on the air with it. We can talk to the world with it. Um, if we want to add peripherals, then uh, that will be video number two because I'm running out of time. So we've set up the basic station. We've got a transceiver, power supply, microphone, uh, CW key, antenna connected. We're ready to go. Are there other things we could add to the station? Uh, you bet. And we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you have a question, uh, please post it below. Uh, if you've 
uh, enjoyed the video, uh, please subscribe. Would I do appreciate it. So for now, 73 from Jim, W6LG. See you the next time.